pupils. Pimples! Coming, Mr. Chikoi. Sorry I was a little bit late this morning, Mr. Chikoi. Okay, you want to get inside and start her up? Why do you suppose they got her out this morning? Some kind of trouble, I guess. Come on, Pimples, wake up, huh? <laughs> Always I'm kind of this way this early. I know. All right, try her once. Go on. Want me to clean the plugs, maybe? I did an hour ago. Gee, I'm sorry, Mr. Chikoi. Anything I can do? Like you to put on a clean shirt, though. Mrs. Chikoi don't like to see you in a shirt like that. Sunday, especially. Yeah, but you know what I think? She don't like me, clean shirt or dirty. No, nah, that ain't it. A lot of passengers coming through this time of year. She got a lot in her mind. All right, try it again. Hey, Mrs. Chikoi won't have to worry about me now. School starts. What are you going to do with the bus when the Gray Fox Company takes over this run, Mr. Chikoi? Sell her and go back to Mexico? Mexico is not for my wife. Hold still, can't you? Because if you're aiming a solo, sweetheart, there ain't much sense putting a whole lot of work back into her. You never did own a horse, did you? Animal any kind. Oh, that's different. Animals got feelings. Pimples, you drive the same bus ten years. It's got feelings, too. Mr. Chikoi. What? Mr. Chikoi, could we fix it? I mean, could you fix it so you don't call me Pimples anymore? What's your name? First name? Ed. Ed Carson. When my old man was alive, he always told how we were distant relatives of Kid Carson. That's so. Okay, switch her off now. Before I got all these pimples in grammar school, they used to call me Kit. Better load up the tire chains and rope before the gray fox gets in. Might need them. Norm is up. Okay, Kit Carson, grab yourself some coffee. Load up later. See if you can get through the day without breaking a dish. Don't do it on purpose. Makes me nervous, that's all. All right. Hi. Piece of chocolate cake, please. Cake for breakfast? Bet Mr. Robert Wagner doesn't start his day wolfing down chocolate cake. Me up. I figure Sunday's a pretty busy day for you. Use the sleep. Sleep? Are you kidding? I should have been in there an hour ago. When I woke up, I missed you. Didn't even hear you get out of bed. Ah, uh, you got a good rest. You look good. Like to see you that way. If I look good all the time, there'd be nothing done. Come on. It's true. Sunday, and it's going to be a nice day, okay? Okay, nice day. Good morning. I was going to come back and wake you up. You look through working outside? Pretty much. Be a while before the Gray Fox gets in, though. Yeah, like five minutes. Take ten. The clock is fast at that. Give me a kiss. You're awful. 
Come to think of it, you always are. What'd you expect from an Irish Mexican? <laughs> nice day, remember? Okay. Nice day. One of these days, Mr. Chico, you're gonna kiss us right out of house and home. Takes two to do it, though. What is it now? Mrs. Chicoy, is it okay if Pimples has a second slice of cake? Let him have it. Wait a minute, no! Pimples has a fly in it. Come on, honey, forget it! Where's the fly? You had a fly in your cake yesterday. I think you carry flies in your pocket. Why is it you never find a fly until the cake's half eaten already? Okay, give him another piece. It's your idea, not mine. It is not. You're like me, Mrs. Chicoy. We sure hate flies. Who doesn't? Other flies, I guess. <laughs> I thought I told you to wash those windows. Well, it's gonna rain. They'll get dirty again. If they get dirty again, we'll wash them again. People don't eat in dirty places. Johnny. Stuff ain't medicine, you know. It's supposed to be fun. With you, it ain't fun no more. It's those kids. That Norma and, and Pimples. His name is Kid. K-I-T. You keep on saying I don't look good anymore. Said you did look good. Just a couple of minutes ago, I said it. What happened to our day, huh? The nice one. Still got it. It's still here. No, he it ain't. It's shot. It and a lot just like it. Johnny, I, I don't feel very good today. Then start feeling good. You pull that one on me once too often. Don't run it into the ground. Get that straight. Johnny. glad when you don't have to drive that bus into San Juan every day. Oh, time I get there, I'm looking forward to coming back. It'll be better when the new highway's open. Four bus loads of greyhounds to feed every day. And you're here to help. Yeah, standing behind a cash register with a big belly. <laughs> You'll never get fat. Listen, you're too good looking to be off by yourself without me. Just remember, nothing ever happens on a 50-mile bus ride to be jealous of. It's famous. You're saying I married you to be with you. Because I couldn't keep my hands off you. I still can't, Johnny. I'd die if you ever walked out on me. Matter of fact, you wouldn't die. You'd go looking for somebody else to pump gas and fill that cigar box of yours with more money. No! I wonder if there'll be any important people on the bus today. Important people don't ride buses. I happen to know Marlon Brando does. Incognito. That way he can study people. Helps his acting. Marlon Brando. Hey, you better get those curlers out of your hair. Start trying to get a crush on a guy you actually know one time. It's more fun. Sorry, Mr. Chicoy. It's the bus. Johnny, I gotta go, honest. 
Oh, let him wait a minute. Let Norma look after him. Oh, honey, I gotta get in the kitchen. I gotta get dressed. Brought me to the end of the world, all right, didn't you, Mother? Is that it? We're going to ride 50 miles in that? Oh, it'll be fun. Why is it adventure? Let's leave the complaining to Mildred. Hey, how about the luggage? Just a minute. Hey, hey, miss. Still want to get off here? Rebel corners for San Juan? Oh. One does expect whatever might I just take my coffee. Me too, and toast and fresh frozen orange juice. Mildred, you'd better come and freshen up. You look terrible. Who oh, too? night on the bus. Didn't have you figured for this side trip, though. Are you going to Mexico, too? San Juan. Oh, another tourist, eh? No. I hear this mission at San Juan is very colorful. That's why we're taking the side trip. Yes. You know, I have the feeling I've met you someplace before. I don't think so. I've been living in Chicago. Well, that's it. Must have been in Chicago. What line of work are you in? Show business? I used to do some things around a dental clinic. Like, say, a receptionist, maybe? No, no more like saying, spit out, please. Hello, kiddo. Hello. Something for you? Uh, just coffee. Black, please. You're like me. Hmm? I like it black, too. Me, too. With bacon and hot cakes. Could it have been Dr. Lynch's office? No? Oh, well, it'll come back to me sooner or later. Elliot, come, darling. We'll sit over here. You were kidding him about being from Chicago, weren't you? All those Los Angeles labels. No, <laughs> L.A. is kind of my base of operations. Oh, are you in the movies? I <laughs> know. No, I'm not. Television, then, I bet, huh? Mm, hey, sorry. miss. I bet you've had all kinds of offers and turned them down, though, huh? That's kind of true. Hey, miss. I got a friend who works in one of the big studios in Hollywood. Really? Is he influential? He gets coffee. I'm sorry. I hate to interrupt your career, Miss Trapman, but that cup goes to number two. I'm sorry. Uh, this gentleman's a coffee, bacon, and hotcakes. No hotcakes, sorry. Too much to do before you got here. Mind if I move up? The free seat? Thank you. My name's Ernest Horton. Easy name to remember because it sort of fits my personality. Frank and Ernest. Do you get it? Frank, Ernest. <laughs> You're Miss... Uh... Oaks. Miss Oaks. Well, Miss Oaks, you and I are strangers at the moment. Perfect strangers meeting in this desert crossways, right? Sort of. You'd be surprised how unlike strangers, strangers can be when they aren't strangers anymore, right? Probably. You and I have got a long way to go today, so who knows what might happen. Mr. Horton, 
Everybody knows what might happen. So for the 50 miles, let's see if we can't just stay acquaintances. Hmm? Think we could? Well, now, you just might be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I always am. Story of my life. Oh, sorry. Here, let me get you into the car. Oh, that's all right. I, I gotta check the bus. You the driver? Yeah. Mildred. Yes, Mother. Father and I are sitting over here, Mildred. You look good there. Will you leave her alone, Bernice? We've done enough as it is. You know why she was talking to that bus driver, don't you? Because she spilled his coffee. She was doing it to test us to see if we care about her. She's still a child looking for her father. Then she'd better put on her bifocals because I'm right here. I'm quoting her psychoanalyst. Poppycock. Now, will you stop nagging and let her enjoy the trip? Heaven knows it isn't easy. Because you aren't making it easy. Oh, when we get to Mexico, I'll sing, I'll dance, I'll weave hot tamales in my hair. You'll see. All this is for her sake, not mine. She's the one who was getting herself talked about with that basketball coach. Okay, okay, so we didn't like the basketball coach. But the fact is, the world is full of basketball coaches, even in Mexico. And if you don't know it, she'll prove it to you. Here is another bulletin on weather conditions as they affect the extreme southern tip of California. The following highways have been placed on the danger list. Cabrillo, Ate, and San Juan. Only emergency travel is recommended. Bureau forecasts intermittent rain throughout the day. The low pressure area is moving slowly inland. Clearing sky predicted for early morning. Now time for another rain. Did you hear it? Yeah, I can make it, though. Look, when you get to San Juan, you better load up and head straight back. You fool around too long, you won't have any passengers to make the trip back. Not when that rain catches up with you. Make a nickel, make a dime, make a dollar. It's not a dollar, it's 15, 20 bucks. There you are. Go for the gas. Hey, you popcorn poop! Chicoy? Yes, Mr. Van Brunt. Listen to me, Chicoy. I've got to be in the county registrar's office no later than 3 o'clock, understand? Well, if the river ain't too high beyond Breed's Junction, you'll get there by 2. But supposing it is too high, what do you do then? Oh, I might turn around and come back again. Don't try getting funny with me, Chicoy. If we don't hit San Juan to 3 o'clock, I'll be in trouble. So will you. I'll change my clothes now, Mr. Chicoy. I don't know what to do. Somebody was supposed to meet me at San Juan at 1. Oh, can I use your phone? Go ahead. like that wants to go to a crummy place like San Juan for. Say, I, I wouldn't want to discommodate you any, but... I mean, I I'd hate to be a bother, but would you do me a real big favor? Take an envelope and give it to that friend of yours at the studio personally? Oh, gee, honey, he's very busy. Well, break like that, please. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't change anything. Okay, go get me the letter. It won't make any difference, believe me. Hello, Mr. Stanton. This is Camille Oaks. How do you do? I hate to bother you at your office, but my bus doesn't get in till 2. Oh, swell. I'll be looking for you then at the bus station. Hmm? Well... If your friends want music and colored lights and that stuff, that's entirely up to them. What magazine? Which number? No, I didn't. <laughs> I'm glad you thought so. That, that was strictly a frame-up. Yeah, I'll see you later.
it from our sponsor. Why not lump all your debts in? Norma. Oh, I just forgot something in my room. Your invitation to the Academy Awards, maybe? It ain't none of your business, Mrs. Chicoy. You suppose I want my customers to think I got a bunch of goons waiting on them? Norma Trapper. Bus 34, waist 22. What am I running here? A girly show or something? Don't give me that picture back or else. Don't you threaten me, Miss Moldy Queen. And just do your work and quit pretending you're somebody you're not. You've got to stop making fun of me. Just do one honest hour's work. That's all I ask. Just one hour. Don't you push me, Mrs. Chicoy. I'm going. Ever since I came to work for you, you've been picking on me because you're jealous. Not because of work, but because you're jealous. Jealous? Of you, of me, and every other young girl who came to work here. And frankly, Mrs. Chicoy, I can't blame you for being jealous one little bit. <laughs> Why, you... Alice, put it out. Sorry, folks. so good. Johnny, you can't walk out on me. I can't stand in here all alone. You got the donuts, you got the customers. That's what you want. Sorry, was I bothering you? If I was, I certainly didn't mean to. A whistling girl and a crowing hen always come to some bad end. <laughs> That's what they taught me. Okay. You've been driving this bus long? 
Since you was in fifth grade, anyways. I skipped fifth grade. I was smart. Mildred. Mother, please. You must get awfully tired driving this road every day. Elliot, I wonder if you have any insight as to what your daughter's up to. I'd say she's going full speed to the bus driver stage. Oh, you can be ugly sometimes. I know. And you put things so prettily always. Young lady, it's against the law to talk to the bus driver. Mildred, the gentleman's quite right, Mildred. When we flew to Honolulu last summer, you weren't allowed to talk to that pilot in the cabin, were you? No, I waited. For? A lot of people want to see me there. I sure wish you were taking the Gray Fox straight through to L.A. tonight. I'm going to try and get a job at a drive-in. I know you could just help me an awful lot. The things I could help you with wouldn't do you any good at a drive-in, honey. You know those red velvet trousers they make you wear? And do they stretch them on tight? Do you pay for them? Oh, no. Well, they'll lend you a pair. One size too small. Gee, I'd hate that. Even if I did get discovered. Well, I'll tell you, there are two ways of getting discovered, honey. Coming and going. You better figure them both. Maybe we could meet after you get to Hollywood. And if it didn't work out for me at the drive-in, maybe I could learn to do the same thing you do. What do you mean, the same thing I do? I don't mean at the same place. I'd work at a different dentist. We could sort of share experiences. Well, we'll see how it goes. Are you married? No. Never? How come you never married? The right guys had the wrong ideas. How about if the right guy had the right idea? This is none of your business, Mr. Horton. You don't even know my business is. Salesman. And yours? Miss Oakes is a dental nurse. What do you sell besides you, Mr. Horton? Oh, I travel in a very dignified line. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind sitting on that? Careful. <laughs> What's going on? It's a bestseller. Ought to get one for your mother-in-law. Oh, What's that black sat? This? Oh, well, now that's not a joke. That's an invention of my own. It's a slip cover. Fits over the lapel of a man's suit. Makes it into a tuxedo. Hey, that's kind of a cute idea. Ingenious. Yeah, now I got another line here. So, oh, let me get that. Oh, here. I've got it. It's OK, I've got it. Do you mind if I borrow this? No, go right ahead. Now I have a little article here which is truly one of the wonders of the world. Would you like to take a guess what it is? Hmm? Go ahead. Elephant? No. Hurtry convertible? Nope. Racehorse? No. But something that even the Queen of Sheba herself might envy. And what's it made of? The platinum of today. Plastic. Just as clear as a crystal and shiny as a diamond. And I would like you to have it, my dear, with my compliment. <laughs> no, thank you. Well, how about you, Norma? No, I couldn't. Well, go ahead, honey. Take it. He wants you to have it. Believe me, he does. Why, sure, she can tell when a guy's on the level, can't you, honey? Oh, look, it's raining in here. Forgot to tell you about that seat. Better move to another seat, baby. Let's see what he gave you, Norma. Worth about 69 cents. You? I was reading where a man can take a correspondence course in electronics and make $600 a month after. I guess it can be done. If you would date with me, and when I get into electronics, I'd buy you one of those things made of silver. General store, comfort stop if necessary. Keep on going. Nobody wants to stop. Do you? Anybody under pressure? Well, I'll sacrifice myself to the general good. Atta girl. Uh, 
Elliot, we're never going to get there wherever it is we're going. This is how you wanted it, off the beaten path. Driver, are we on schedule? Schedule? <laughs> Mister, this ain't the champagne flight to Chicago. Do you know where that wind's coming from? Southwest. Do you know where those clouds are coming from? Southwest. Do you know where all our rain comes from mostly? Northeast? Yes, north. No! Southwest! Hey, why don't you take your own advice and shut up for a while, huh? I wasn't talking to you, Chicoy. I was addressing my fellow passengers. I got the right. I paid my fare. about the weather, how about me buying you a nice wet drink and we'll get to the end of the line? You know, it was real nice of you giving the kid that contract. Well, I am nice. And smart, too, I suppose. I don't know. If I was smart, I'd be settled down and married instead of peddling stuff around like this. <laughs> hey, how about that, Marion? You and me, huh? Well, it's original, no question about it. Simple as ABC. S-E-X, you mean. Look. You're a salesman, so am I. We both know what the score is. It's even. So why don't we call it that and quit? Okay? I didn't know you were a salesman. Well, I am, and a good one. How about that drink? I don't drink. All right, then I'll have two drinks. I'll drink to the both of us. Fine. You do that. Now, why don't you leave me alone so I can catch up on what's been happening to the rest of the world? No, as a salesman, you learn. See that, Chicoy? I see it. That helicopter belongs to the highway department, folks. We're in trouble. you to go back. Is that the only slide? It's about three more up above. It'll be a week before the road's clear. Now look, Chicoy, I got business in the county courthouse before three o'clock today. Not a chance, Van Brunt. Wait a minute. How about that old uh, washboard road down the canyon? Is that still open? Nobody uses that no more except old Zhao and a couple of sheep herders. Well, it's wide enough for the bus. It's a good 15-mile detour. Nothing in your franchise says you have to make the run, Johnny. Not with conditions bad like this. I know there ain't, Hal. The phone line's still open to the corners? Don't know, I haven't tried. Operator, get me through to Rebel Corners, will you? I'm not pressing too hard, am I? Yeah, I love it, love it, love it. You take Gary all right? Just fine. Got a kind word out of this doll. All you need is a purple heart. Got some mercurochrome in here somewhere. Oh, no, honey. I don't want a mercurochrome. The face all red. Give me a Band-Aid. Well, you've got some brandy. My wife's pretty badly shaken. No liquor license. Yeah, I got some bourbon. My case, will you, honey? There you are. I sure appreciate this, young You're fellow. welcome. You ought to stay still. <laughs> Say, uh, do you carry any novelties here? Like what? Take a look. 
You like candy? <laughs> Would you keep trying, please? Johnny, sometimes we do things out of love that don't seem like love at all. You know what I mean? It's all right, because I love you, even when you act like a stinker. Even when I act like a stinker, and that takes some doing. So you just turn the old butts around and, and come back to your double quick. Yeah. And you better cut down on that drink and double quick, too. Why, why don't you go to bed, honey? Go to bed and take it easy today. Look. I'll go to bed, Wynn. Hey, when are you coming back, anyway? Well, that's what I was calling about. There was a landslide, and the road is closed, and I was... Well, we was just... Now I get it. What do you mean? I mean, all of a sudden, the road is closed, and you've got no place to go except back to Mama. Honey, that ain't it. You've got to come back anyway, so you make it sound like a pretty good deal. Like you're sorry, and I'm sorry, and all those dames are sorry, and Norma's sorry. And I was glad I was going to see you. And if you wasn't so drunk, you'd know it was the truth. Poor Johnny. Tried to get away and couldn't make it. Now you can't even cry on a blonde shoulder. Well, I'll, I'll see you, Johnny. I'll have some beans cooking or something. You, you don't have to worry about your dinner any of that. All right, everybody. I'm taking the bus over the old road to San Juan. What kind of a road is that? It's a good road, a washboard road. Mister, if you don't want to come, you don't have to. Call the sheriff's office to San Juan, report those slides. Mildred, your mother and I think we better hire someone to drive us back to the main highway right away. But Daddy, we've come all this way to see the San Juan mission. No one ever really wanted to see it anyway. Elliot, how could you tell us such a thing? I do want to see it. I've been told 21 times that it's for the good of my soul. Again, ever. Can I ride next to you this time? All the way, I mean. Well, I don't know if I get a chance to All sit next set. to Miss Alps. Just a minute. gotten so old, Jamie, in the ditch or in the mountain someplace. You know, you was listening. Alice can be an awful fool sometimes. She ain't no fool. She just don't care enough. Not about me, anyhow. Got a lot of women there. Better think twice, Johnny. Charge this, same as usual? Yep. Alice can pay for it. Sweetheart, one tank full of gas. That's all I'm taking. Say we go back down the road a piece. Put up a couple of road clothes signs at Rebel Corners. We might even get a slice of pie from Alice. What do you say? I don't know what to do. Because 
shall always be my darling. You had a permanent slob. Look at that blouse. And clean. Oh, since you rubbed some delicious, exotic beauty cream in that silly face of yours. It costs too much. You got scared. You got chicken. You started scrimping and saving and penny pension. Maybe it ain't too late, Johnny. With that landslide and all, you gotta come back. How far is it this bad? Can we get to the bridge? How far is that? Driver, I said, how far is that? About eight miles. Holy cow. Do you know what you were saying about not spending another night under her roof? Mrs. Chicois? And I meant it. I know. But I've got a feeling Mr. Chicois isn't going to spend another night under her roof either. Ever. I wouldn't if I was him. I know, but I was thinking. If I was to marry someone, I don't see how I'd be able to forget him, ever. Not once I loved him. Not even Mrs. Chicoy? Well, what I want in a wife is to be true. And Mrs. Chicoy is that, all right. How about you? You plan to be true, too? Oh, sure. If she's the right kind of wife, I will. Suppose she isn't. Well, then I'd show her a thing or two. I'd show her too could play that game. Like Cary Grant done in that movie. <laughs> you and Cary Grant. Ha! Kid. Yes, Mr. Chicoy? Visor shook loose. Get it out of here, will you? Oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't your fault. Here, want one? Oh, no, thanks. I gave up smoking long ago. How about you? I could use one. Here, I'll light it for you. Your hands are kind of busy. Little lipstick on it. Hope you don't mind. I don't mind. Who's that? What? The medallion. It's the Virgin. The Virgin of Guadalupe. What does she do? When you ain't sure about something, you ask her. And then she tells you? Then you tell yourself. 
you're Mexican? Half and half. My mother was Irish. Handsome people, both sides. No wonder you're not so bad looking. How old are you? So old, I like being asked. Make you feel better? Nope. I'm gonna drop you off on the San Juan bus station in about 40 minutes. Pity. You'll never know. Elliot, I'm afraid I'm gonna be car sick. Do you suppose they have any of those little cardboard containers that they have on airplanes? Of course they don't. Maybe if you close your eyes and try to relax, you'd feel better. Elliot. Huh? I can hear your teeth rattle. Don't you think you want to take out your dentures? No. You'll lean back. You'll be all right. Bouncing doesn't open up your cut. Honey, forget it. It's nothing. Really, you in love? Huh? I mean, with anybody. No. You feel like beer or not? I don't know. I really don't quite know. Wouldn't it be fantastic if we, I, what I mean, if you and I sort of possibly could wind up? Ernest, I'd like to ask you a highly personal question. Sure, go ahead. Quite honestly, why do you like me? Oh, because you're thrifty, you're a good cook, and you hemstitch marvelously. No, I mean honestly. Honestly? Because you are probably the most physically attractive girl I've ever spoken to. And? And on the other hand, I'm a man who never spoke to Ava Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's honest. You sure had me pegged for a fresh guy to make this morning, didn't you? I guess I did. And you know something? You are absolutely right. <laughs> if you scratch the surface just a little, you'll find out I'm, I'm really not just a fresh guy. I have depths, honest. I think I have. Want to scratch the surface a little? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Nice. I haven't felt this good in years. For me, it's been years, too. Well, I see you two are getting pretty chummy. Young fellow, you and I have some serious talking to do. You're obviously a man of considerable talent, and that's something I like to see in a young fellow. Look, I come to L.A. quite a few times a year. You've got an apartment, haven't you? That's right. I wouldn't be surprised, but we could do some business together. How's that, Mr. Cricket? But now, look, Horton, I'm always on the look... I'm always on the lookout for fellows with initiative who know their way around, you know? Well, I have been giving some thought to settling down a regular job with a proper firm. You may have come to the right man, my boy. Maybe we can all get together on L.A. sometime and have some fun. Who knows, huh? There's the bridge, folks. I'll take a look around. Hey, keep on. What is your bus way? About sixty five hundred empty. You were in business. Yeah, 1922. All right, everybody has to go across on foot. Help me across, kid. Come on, mother. Oh. Oh. I can carry you, Norma. You watch out for yourself. <laughs> Six. I've got an extra. 
Mr. Fair, you can have. What about you, Van Brunt? Oh, quit showing off. That bridge is good and you know it. I've got to be in San Juan by 3 o'clock. Now quit talking and get moving. All right, you ask for a ride. You're going to get it. Let's go. OK, kid. down the road and put up the sign. After that, you might do some work in your engine. And Bud takes your time. You want to go eat that pie all by yourself? That's right. Okay, Bud. I'll get you a cup of coffee afterwards. After what? Hi, Alice. Get out of here! Get out! Oh, calm down. What are you taking a bath for in the middle of the day, Get anyhow? Get out! Didn't answer my question. Why a bath this time of day? If you must know, I'm getting myself boiled out before Johnny gets back. 
And what makes you think Johnny's coming back? What are you talking about? There's been a landslide. He had to. When last seen, he and the bus were heading south over the old road. That's why I'm here. I thought you might need a good shoulder to cry on. He said he was coming back. Hey, you and him are no good for each other anyway. I'll let you know about it. Let him sweat it out. He'll be back one day. Back and sorry. I don't want him sorry. That's not the way I want him. I'm the one that's sorry. Get off that bed! Get out! Don't get me wrong, Alice. I like Johnny. Just stop by for coffee and donuts. Like fun you did. Okay, then get out to the lunchroom. Kind of foreigner or something. Tell him not to drive so fast. The man's had enough trouble for one day. Well, don't be afraid of what people think of you all the time. Go on, tell him. No. What did you say? I said no. Wait. Hope those brakes hold. Is something burning? It's the brakes. We didn't turn turtle. Could have killed all of us. I had you figured for a better man, Chief. Better drive right away. Raffle? He drove good, mister. I'd like to see you drive that good with water in the brake drums. Uh, Why didn't you get him fixed? Bringing us over this road was criminal negligence. It certainly was. It isn't a road. It's the equipment. This old bus ought to have been condemned long ago. The one ought to have been condemned is that fool bus driver. Yeah, it's As a hard way. Carrier, we've got a duty to all. You didn't have to come along. I told you that. Well, we should have known better, considering you weren't even born in this country. Mother! Man doesn't have to be a native son to get his brakes free line. Why didn't he? A very full report of this whole thing is going to be made to the Highway Commission, believe me. Hey, where do you think you're going? Down the road. Farmhouse about two miles away. Get a tractor. Hey, Chicoy! Look here, you can't leave us just like that. Nothing out on safe hole. Not in the middle of a mud hole. Elliot! Want me to come see you, Johnny? No, oh, kid. Stay and watch after the customers. I broke a strap. Well, I'll get yourself a lawyer and sue. Now he won't get there till dawn. I don't know what I'm going to do. I wish you had your troubles. You're a slip shower. Thank you. I had no idea Alice would take it so hard. One man dame. She'll get over it. Unless she turns on the gas. Huh?
What's your thing? What's your need? Better plan of spending the night stand one. What are you talking about? They're going up. Up and over. They mean it, Hal? They really mean it? You're going to be wet and scared and probably throw up. Get going. Light isn't too good. Sure. Helps you see better. I'm sorry. About coming here? No, about all those people. My mother and my father, too. I mean, the way they turned on you, you think that what happened was your fault or something. You come here to tell me that? No. I took a walk. your footprints and it was raining. Yeah, your coat's all wet. Why don't you take it off? So are my shoes and my stockings. Pretty lonely type girl, ain't you? What makes you say that? I got eyes at the back of my neck. You and your folks are not so good. Right, not so good. Seems like kind of a nice trip they're giving you. Giving me? They're hauling me away from something they don't approve of. What was wrong with him? He's male. My mother doesn't approve of males. Kind of tough on your father. I stopped being a male a long time ago. He's just a good provider. Something I don't understand. Why'd you come along? They challenged me. Said I didn't know my own mind. Looks like they had a point. I guess I always had to let them make their point. Someday they're gonna be sorry. Someday? Could be today. Aren't you going to have one? No. And I don't want any. What do you want? I don't know. I guess right this second just to be here with you. your lap anyway, so why bother? I'll bother. When you get through arguing with yourself. 
you laugh at me? Do you care? I do very much. I talk too much. I bet right at this second you're probably laughing at yourself saying, why doesn't she stop talking? Why don't you? Walking in the rain gives some people what they call a Freudian release. Oh, Bernice, face facts. She's probably with that bus driver right now. Then I wish she was dead. I don't. I'm as ashamed of this as you are, but I don't put the blame on Mildred. Well, we've done everything, haven't we? You're a pure white angel, Bernice. I think you hate it if I so much as touch your hand. Always have. Elliot, how can Brought up in an atmosphere like that, how could Mildred develop any right human values? Why, Elliot, we have the sweetest, cleanest marriage I know. Yes, Bernice, yes. See if you can't get 40 weeks. Look, that isn't poison ivy. California holly. What? California holly. No. I grew up in Salinas. Wish I'd known you then. I missed a lot of stops along the way. You don't know me at all, Ernest. I don't have to know any more about you. Everything I said, I meant. Did you really? Can you doubt the word of a traveling salesman? I was only kidding, sweetie. Always make one of the jokes, that's me. It helps when you like physical appeal. What are you talking about? I never won a beauty contest. I know. You know, when my vacation is over, we ought to get together. I'd like to. I've been watching you operate all along on this trip. I like your style of approach. How do you mean? Well, for a guy in my position, those kind of dames are pretty tough to meet, and even then you're never sure which way they're going to jump. I mean, your professionals, your B-girls, your chorus line blondes. What professionals? What are you talking about? You know, he's never even asked me one single thing about myself. Why should he? Remember what he said, why shouldn't we get married? Just kidding. Well, he said it again. For serious. For really and truly. Are you going to? He's got a little apartment, Spanish type. And he's going to buy me the latest model, self-timing electric stove. All you do is set it, and when the steak's done, it plays tenderly. Oh, Camille. <laughs> Camille? Are you crazy? Who's crazy? You. Just because a girl's got blonde hair and got a build on her, guys like you think all oh, you gotta so? do. Well, I've got news for you, my pure young friend. Not only in the magazine, but I've seen her doing her act. What magazine? You, Pritchard, you never saw that girl before in your entire life. Don't tell me. You know what it was? It was at a convention in Chicago last fall, sitting in a big glass of champagne. I knew I'd seen it. Hey, are you kidding? Why, it was in your magazine. That's when it came back to me. What are you talking about? You mean you didn't see it? I thought that's why you were handing her that line of bull. Thanks. 
Thanks. Hi. Hi. Gee, these are swell shoes. They must have cost a fortune. I, I think you're the luckiest... Skip it, Norma. Ernest, I will... I'll talk to you later, kid. No. What's the matter? Oh, I lost one darn old earring. Hey! What you doing in my barn? I drive the bus from Rebel Corners. We're stuck down the road a mile or so. Need your tractor. It'll cost you. Okay. On quite a detour, ain't you, son? Yep. Hey, move that, will you? You're thinking so hard, Johnny, I can almost hear you. Don't listen. Thinking about your wife. I thought you left her. I did. But as soon as I drop this busload in San Juan, I'm gonna hightail it back so fast. You really love her? Nobody else does. Maybe that's why I do. She drinks too much, she's money hungry. But you know something? When I'm in her arms, I'm the only guy in the world. Everybody out! We've got to make this bus as light as we can. You ladies are just excess weight. Come on out. Hi, folks. Mrs. Chicoy. How did you get here? My air. Me. They get dizzy on a step ladder. Where's Johnny? Uh. He, uh, he went after the tractor. Uh, I believe so, Mrs. Chico. We, we had a little trouble. We sure did. Where's the blonde? Right here. Hi. Hi. Is Johnny? Is the driver coming up? They're coming up. Soon as she finds her earring or some darn thing. Who's she? The girl with it. Where did she lose her earring? In the barn. Aren't you a present, Johnny?
Mildred. Please. I'm so humiliated. Let I... my daughter have her own regrets. Smooth sailing from now on. I talk in your own time. Get us to San Juan pronto. There's nothing to be said, Johnny. Stay in San Juan tonight. All night. Uh huh. Meaning what? Exactly what you think it means. I ever tell you I was a school teacher? You tell me about that magazine, huh? Fresh out of the pokey. I wasn't trying to hide anything from you. I was going to break it to you gradually. What do you want me to do? Wear a sign on my back? I'd still like to see you when we get to L.A. For old time's sake. Okay? Let me just give you a buzz sometime. Who knows? And if I sit here... None of my business. Chair over his head after I caught him kissing some dame at a party. But he never tried that again. Don't know. Never saw him after that. But he's married. Happily married. And I make a living. Believe me, breaking a chair over a guy's head can sure work miracles. The kind of miracles that will last up your whole life. Here we are, folks, into the line. We'll hit San Juan in a couple of minutes. Can you hand me that bag, will you please? I hope she kept that county clerk's office open. Who? A lady of my acquaintance. We're gonna get married. Well, Kitty Poo. You're three hours. Well, it rained so hard. Bye, Johnny. Huh? Oh. Bye. Norma? You forgot your Saturday and Sunday. Thanks, Mr. Chikori. There's an extra ten in there for... I'm sorry, Norma. Thanks a lot. Alice, where are you going? None of your business, Johnny. You gotta listen to me. It's all over, Johnny. Thanks for a nice long ride. Alice! Hey, Chicoy! Get moving! You're blocking number six. Get on your loading spot. Single. Out of ten? That will be a short. 
short delay for the San Francisco bus. Please listen for the announcement. Hello. Hello. Chairman of our little entertainment committee. Welcome. Mm, thank you. And I hope you're not James too exhausted. I'm ready to work, Mr. Stanton. Mr. Well, uh, I was coming to that. You see, the actual occasion, uh, this little show we hired you for, isn't until tomorrow night, after all. So I thought we could, uh... <laughs> I see. So you thought we might get together for a little talk, hmm? Oh, uh, did you see my wife? Oh, she's over there. Alice! You change. I got 40 cents. Alice, honey! Listen! That's an awfully long telegram, Mildred. Look, when you tell a man that you're not only coming back, but you'd also like to marry him, he'll have you. It takes more than ten words. You've gone into particulars in a telegram? What do you expect? Los for San Diego, leaving at door number one. All aboard, please. Elliot! Just a minute, Bernice. San Diego, leaving at door number one. There you are. All aboard, please. You know, you should be grateful to me, Horton. I saved you from a bad mistake. Where do those girls usually wind up? I mean, in the end. You mean who marries them? Yeah. Who knows? What's more, who cares? I sort of do. Are you kidding? No, I'm not. Nice, kind, even tempered. Sweet. About the most attractive person I ever spoke to. And you know something? Physical attraction is a very important thing. Mr. James Hollister, please report the information. I do my act tonight or I take Mr. the first bus back to L.A. Camille, but we can't tonight. Well, then you better start looking around for another gal for tomorrow night, Mrs. Stanton. But a night, too. But, Miss Oakes, Camille, can I speak to you for just a minute? It really is important. Okay, it sure better be. It's about our electric stove. Electric stove? For our new apartment? Young man, are you picketing this place? Norma. Yes, Mr. Chicoy? Alice is still in there. Tell her if she don't come out, I go in. Sure, Mr. Chicoy. <gasps> Knowing you. Mrs. Chicoy? Reno bus leaving from door number three. Mrs. Chicoy? Nobody else in here, dearie. not there. There's another door. Reno bus leaving from door number I'll three. bet that's your bus. For where? Reno. Reno? Hey, Mike. At the bus for Reno? Sure is, kid. bus to Rebel Corners.
sure. 